How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Redimus Maximus. And I'm your Star Queen. And this is 8 Bits and Dice Rolls on a quest today. So we have actually been invited into a LARP that I participated in before called Crowd of Terra Nova. It's a local LARP uh, in Indiana. It's really cool if you guys are into that. So what is LARP? LARP is Live Action Roleplay. That is a term that's been used widely across all kinds of different role-playing games in general, moved from the tabletop into real life. And the one that we actually participated in today is called Trial of Terra Nova. So this one is what's called an action look. It is people getting dressed up in awesome medieval high fantasy costumes. And yes, you probably have seen the meme of the whole white people thing, but it's a little cooler than that, and I'll show you exactly why. Join us now.
Oh, oh my God! Finally, we're home. What did you think of this week? Um, it it was a lot. I will say that um, I'm somebody who has only really done tabletop role playing. Well, that that's not entirely true. I've never done full contact like that before. I have a lot more bruises now than when I set out with. And also, can I just say how much of a trooper I was for that drive? I, that was a two-hour drive both ways that we did. And one of them was through a storm that I could barely see anything out of the windshield of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Yes. Now, granted, the drive getting down is down south, basically where this one is. It used to be kind of in central Indiana and through thanks to the economy and everything else. You know, our paths are adapt, and so this one is a little cheaper rate and move down south. And actually, I mean, it was kind of a ghost town getting down there. Yeah, down. lots of uh, Resident Evil 5 vibes as we were joking on the way down through yes. a certain town that we passed through. Yeah, and, you know, if you are a native of Indiana, you might have been to, like, Bradford Woods and this kind of place. So they have, like, the scout camps. Okay. They're okay as far as their amenities. There's always, like, showers, a nice kitchen, you know, bunk beds and those kind of things to, you know, sleep around in or whatever. And... This one was like super A plus. I was surprised at actually how nice the facility was. I was very much expecting like tent in the woods type deal, and it wasn't that. There was there was running water, there was working showers, there was actual bathrooms, not like outhouses, which was the biggest thing I was afraid of. Oh yeah, well, and the bathrooms of this place was like A plus, yes. A plus plus. So you would think these came out of like a hotel bathroom. Well, I wouldn't. Would have I wouldn't go that far, but they were definitely they were definitely above standard, above what I was expecting. That's for sure. Yeah. And then the beds were surprisingly very surprising. The beds very were very comfy, and, you know, yeah. Again, if you've been to any other Boy Scout camp or whatever, typically it's just kind of a quick, you know, feather mattress type deal. Or, or sponge. Or a sponge. I mean, these ones are really nice. They had a nice box frame to it, I think, so. Yeah, it was up off the floor as well. It actually had, like, frames. Now, they didn't... I don't remember if they had blankets or not, if everybody just brought theirs. Yeah, I think I think everybody just brought theirs. But still, that's that's not a bad thing. Like, the actual mattresses themselves were actually really nice. Yeah, well, they were super, super comfortable with what they were. We didn't stay the night only because this was Falcon's first time doing the more, like you mentioned. Although we probably should have, considering that oh, drive yeah. back was Drag absolute home. torture. Drag home was pretty miserable. Action boats are they're very very they're very involved. Very yes. Involved. Yeah. So it's a lot of hiking. It was very hot, and yeah. when when we were running around in the woods, there was a point where um, a bunch of us kind of ran out of water at one point yeah. as well. And some of those some of those people who were in like full armor, I have no idea. They were like sweating buckets when we came back. Yeah, but they're all troopers. They're yes, doing, you know that's one of the things that's cool if you like that kind of stuff. With Charles and Turnover, they play basically the same rules as the U.S. Postal Service. Don't bring no sleep or you know, they're going to play. They're there to play this game, and it's incredible. Some of the costumes that we saw really well yes. done. Yes. And they've also evolved a lot of the time, too. So I played this game back in 2000, basically from 2012 to about 2017. So I played for a long time. Shout out to Mike, he is the uh, game's DM, and shout out to all the other cast members and everything that can help you think in the game. I would also like to give a special shout out to, I believe it was Catherine the Bard oh, yeah. there. Yeah. I So ever since Gen Con, I told Rudimus when I came back that there were all these LARPers and they were bards all just in the hallways, like just playing instruments, and it wasn't even bad a lot of them were really good there was even like a full band at one point this this wasn't any stage this wasn't like any kind of you know scripted event or anything that Gen Con was putting on these were just random people who came to dress up and just started playing in the hallways some of them you could like donate to but others were just doing it for fun and 
I definitely want to say I used to have a very bad uh, mindset about bars, which I'm happy is kind of breaking me out of that. And I would also like to, again, shout out Catherine because she literally came up with songs, good songs, on the spot. And that is insanely hard to do just from like a musical standpoint, let alone doing that in a game. I don't think I've ever had or played any game where that has ever happened, ever. Yep. So that was incredible. And she's a, a, like a master theme for Yes. Too. She's already started to design some costumes for both of us. I know my personal character, yes, I study the play, my lady. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm working on a really cool no Kabuki theater artist type character. He's going to be, uh, his class is called a weeb. Um. Yes. <laughs> I play as a weeb. What kind of character are you? We've kind of been you know, bouncing back and forth on a few different types. Is there any that really interest you yet? Um, not really. I mean, I've I have had a lot going on personally that I've had to deal with, so I just haven't really had the time. One thing I think that's also I want to point out as well and I think should be addressed is there is kind of a little bit of a barrier to entry when it comes to LARP at least in terms of playing a character, because a lot of those costumes, um, I'm thinking like medieval collectibles and what are some other sites that do them, like Dark Templar or whatever it is. Dark Knight Armory. Dark Knight Armory and stuff like that. A lot of those, a lot of those costumes will, they'll run you some money. Like, it's not a cheap hobby to get into, I will say that. However, you can make it with basically the does kind of require you to However, there is all things like good ones. So it is at least to the point where you can go get a oversized brown shirt and some sweatpants. And, you know, you at least have some okay shoes because obviously you need yes, you, you need some shoes. I would definitely say invest in shoes in this game. I went with my gym shoes and they were pushed to their limits. Yeah, yeah especially in the hiking stuff. Yes. But, you know, you, all you need at that point is belt around the stomach and maybe obviously a belt to keep your pants up but that's it I mean that is at least the entry level you can do now I know obviously you can in the game you want a little bit more detailed character which is great you know Mike is great to work with you uh, you have people you know like Catherine that are extremely good at making costumes that are very cheap that's always an option too that's kind of the cool thing about this one too is everyone is very involved and nice they will introduce you to classes or introduce you Combat and all those kind of things to get involved in the story. And yeah, I mean, you just want to come and watch. Like, they make you put on a you know, like orange vest or like a cap to basically symbolize that, hey, I'm out of the game, but I'm watching. So it's really cool. Plus, let's talk about all the snacks and stuff. That's true. There was, uh, there was actually a little snack bar at the beginning there. Yeah. And it kind of got raided as the day went on because it was really hot outside. Uh, it was really hot and people got really hungry because they were running around in the woods and bashing each other. And actually, that's something I will say as well. The the weapons are... They're foam, but they're not like wiffle bats. They're more... How would you kind of describe the, the hardness of the foam? Because you've... Well... I would say that it's probably on par with, like, let's say, a, uh, like a matte foam. Yes. Type deal. So a lot of the LARP weapons are made with, usually, it's, the stereotype is they're made with PVC, and then they have a few layers of foam that go over that, which are then shaped to make uh, you know, weapon shapes, so like swords, or like katanas, or... Staffs. Staffs. Staff. Staffs. Staffs. <laughs> Staff, you know, very posh. But, uh, yeah, no, they make staffs, quarter staffs. There's uh, wands and those, those kind of things. There's spell packets that are made of, like, bean bags and things like that. That so, was like, cool, I thought, for uh, yes. keeping track of spells, because I thought it would just be kind of like a case of Dungeons & Dragons, where you just kind of have to read the ability and just, like, scream what it does, and then everyone just has to abide with it. But There's a little bit of that, but it's a little easier because it's just like, hey... I, Again, I mean, lightning bolts, you know, they tell you what these spells do as far as, like, your buffs or, like, powers or whatever. It's not just the lightning bolt thing. Please don't think it's just lightning bolt thing. But they were throwing bean bags, and a lot of them had, like, custom emblems on them, so it was yeah. very easy to keep track of, like, which magic was what, and some of them, 
I believe actually glowed in the dark as well. So like if they had, if they were doing something at night, then they were easier to find. I think some of the arrows were like that too as well, where they had like custom emblems on them on the back. Some of them, yeah. And then so if you want to be an archer, for instance, okay, that is a real thing. You yes. Will shoot a real bow. However, the tip has been replaced with a what's called like a buffer tip. And it's completely a very thick foam that is designed to, like, take hits. And those kind of things did not do anything to you because it's such thick you know, foam. You're going to feel it like you got shot. But there's no, like, safety concern with it the way that they're used. I will say as well, I think the weapons, because I've done Indie Lightsaber Academy before, and I remember I walked out of that and I was covered head to toe in bruises. Oh, now, yeah. Thankfully it's something like that. No, I will say all the weapons are probably softer to hit you than like if I was to say whack readiness with like my lightsaber that's in the office. It's a lot softer than that and I think I was expecting them to be about that in terms of hardness. So granted people were still hitting pretty hard but like I didn't walk away like with purple bruises like I did with Indie yeah. Lightsaber Academy yeah. although people can like you got beat with a bunch of no <laughs> right. it's just, you know, they use what's called a lightest touch system yes. so essentially it's like you, you're going to feel it you know if I'm like getting starkling like this she'll feel it but it's not going to leave it won't leave a ton of bruises or anything like that because it's, again it is an action war that will be you know just in contact with weapons and things like that and it's not like you're swinging it around with a baseball bat. Like Correct. that. Yeah, you're not going full swing. You're not going full swing, and and if you are doing that, I'm fairly sure that Mike probably would have. That is against the rules. Mike probably would have called that out immediately and said like, "Hey, quit it. You have to do it this proper way." And some people had shields as well. Actually, yeah, uh, I actually got to. I got to shoot somebody's shield, actually, with a crossbow, so that was fun. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's crossbows. I mean, there's all kinds of different things. It's a high fantasy LARP, so it's not just medieval-type things. You know, again, there's there's the sorcerers, there's, you know, people that dress up like, uh, I hate for lack of better terms, Ninja Turtles-type <laughs> situations, or like dragons, or, you know, those kind of things. Yes, there's medieval factors into it, but there's a lot of flexibility to type of character you want to play to put it that way but yeah i mean we had a great time it literally we went from you know nine o'clock till basically 10 o'clock at night time because that's what the drive stuff that you know, uh they also you know they had tons of water for everybody to kind of drink on and those kind of things and people bring other drinks uh there's people that sell goods in the yes game. they have their own currency in the actual game, and it's like the old school arcade coins that they put like a, a, a customized logo on there. So they have like silver or gold. I know uh, originally I believe they had like a bronze type thing. So you had like the copper, silver, gold, like you know, tiers of like, payment and all those. And people will literally take money out of their own pockets to go get these things and then rebrand them or do something different with them to sell them in the game so their characters can get up to and income and things like that. Because in the game, where obviously the weapons are not going to actually get damaged, they do have damage upkeeps and all those kind of things as far as like the little bucks and things like that in the game. Think of it like in, I believe it was Breath of the Wild and in Tears of the Kingdom for Legend of Zelda and in, and yeah. in a couple of Dark Souls games like where you have to, to you have to like do certain things to upkeep the weapon otherwise it's just going to break and shatter because you didn't take care of it. Yep. Yep, and uh, if you're interested in it too, I mean, there is a uh, race called the Florians, so they're kind of like an Italian Renaissance style. Uh, if you like, you know, uh, guns, like, you know, powder style guns and things like that, that's a culture that allows you to use those because it's like an innovative type thing. So, again, there's more, there's more flavor than just the you know, fantasy medieval stuff. I do find it interesting because your last character was from there, was, weren't they? Yeah, he was a Florian. I find it funny that our mind was kind of on the same track with that, but our thinking kind of diverged on that path because when I heard that race, uh, well, not the race, it's a culture, yep. right? Yeah. So when I heard that culture, his character was kind of like Edward Kenway from Assassin's Creed 4, if yep. you remember with the, you just stop pulling out guns because you just don't he reload. Was designed after that. And, yes. You know, uh, we'll have our editor include the picture from my old times in bar. It was very fun. But then, kind of diverging off that path, I was thinking the same thing, except I was going with Ezio with the knives yeah. and the... the 
the rogi and the the pure Italian Riz as well. <laughs> very sociable, very uh, very nimble type deal. I think he had a gun towards. The, yeah, he did have a gun towards the end. I think. Yeah. He had like a crossbow, a little, like, like a little wrist little, gun. Like wrist, yeah. yeah. Like I'm sure there probably is some kind of weapon like that. Probably, like, well, or you can probably make it really easily by just mounting like a small probably, nerf yeah. gun to your wrist or something. There's, there's all kinds of innovative ways to do that. But yeah, I mean, I had a great time. I know that we're definitely going to try to make it back to the next one, which I think is in October. So if you guys are interested in checking it out, especially with them, you know, let a leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think of Warps or if there's one you participated in. You know, what did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Are you living just the meme? <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a serious question. You know what I mean? Because that's, you know, LARP gets a lot of stigmas and things like that. And it's a lot more than that. You know, if, if you love storytelling, you got to find the right one. There's all kinds of different ones. You know, there's ones about, like, dystopian type situations that are cyberpunk. There's steampunk. There's, there's steampunk. There's vampire. There's all kinds of different stuff. Even if you don't want to swing a, you know, a, a foam weapon. There's something for you out there. You just gotta figure it out what you like. If you want to swing real weapons as well, there is something out there like that too. Yeah, the SEA group, you know, if you really like the uh, old school reenactment style. Yes. And you, always, you like getting hit by blunt and real weapons, <laughs> that is a thing. You know, I've heard it's really cool. You can also go to your, your local renaissance fairs if you just yes. want to experience the old school feel. So, but yeah, like I said, we're definitely excited to check out the next one. Like I said, it won't be until October, but I guess it's something to look forward to, which is really exciting too. And again, thank you so much to Trials of Terra Nova for having us back out there. We can't wait to see you guys. We hope to see this video. Yes. And for us, we're going to go ahead and cut this one off and we will see you guys in the next one. I know the next one we're going to be doing an actual podcast episode. We're going to be talking about Gen Con 2023. Yay! Yes, we are. Woo! And also the absolute horde that I and Jay Lovecraft came back with that I think Mr. Lovecraft might still be buried under. So he could be. Yeah, he could why be. Video, it's why he hasn't so. been in the past couple of videos, if you've noticed. He's uh, too busy buried in his books. Yes, yeah. And, you know, you have the Marvel Multiverse of Madness book coming out. So I know he's excited about those. G.I. Joe, Transformers, all the oh, yeah. crossovers. You know, uh, tons, tons. What, World of Darkness just had like a ton of new expansions. And yeah, yeah there's lo lots of activity going on in the board game community right now. There will be more in the actual podcast episode. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you. Have a good one and fight on.